I keep seeing in the comment section uh, people asking, uh, probably sarcastically, they ask, if Russia is winning, how come it's taking them so long? You know, they they started in late February. It's end of May. Why haven't they taken the entire country? I mean, if they're winning, how come they haven't won? I explained many different aspects as to why this is. I've explained how when the U.S. went into Iraq, they went in with more troops. Iraq was a smaller country geographically, smaller country in terms of population. Its military had been degraded after Desert Storm and years and years of sanctions and punitive air raids and the, just the fact that they weren't keeping their military up to standards uh, over all of those years before 2003. That, that is one story. Ukraine is another story. It's a bigger country, bigger population, eight years straight with NATO pumping money, weapons, and training into Ukraine. Uh, another issue is the line of contact between Ukrainian forces and the separatists of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. They had eight years to build these defensive positions. And they weren't just building these positions ahead of a theoretical attack. There was constant fighting. These are battle-tested fortifications and methods of making fortifications. It will take a lot of time and effort to overcome those fortifications. Now, I saw a, well, I, we all see the progress Russia is making on the ground now. They are accelerating. And I saw a, a great video by Jacob Dreisen of the Dreisen Report. The link to the video will be in the video description below. And he explains how the Ukrainians created these defenses. They layered them, uh, but it is not infinite. And once Russia breaches the, these defensive lines, it is going to be very, very hard for Ukraine to reestablish a sort of defensive position. In, in other words, they probably won't be able to because they'll be too busy retreating. And then I've also explained that the combat power of Ukraine is constantly degrading and it'll reach a certain level where they just cannot do the things that they had been doing at the beginning of this. If you cannot get ammunition and fuel, and weapons and reinforcements to these locations that are under attack, the fighting capacity in those areas will collapse. And it, it really doesn't matter what sort of positions you've created. Now, I have a little bit of experience. I, I was a Marine many, many years ago. I was not in the infantry, but every single Marine has to go through what is called Marine Combat Training, MCT. This is after three months of basic training. I don't know what they are doing now, but this back when I went through, this is what they did. And there's another about a month or so of Marine combat training. So in basic training, you learn how to march, put your uniform on properly, uh, fire the M16A2 service rifle at a range. You do some, some exercises uh, and assault courses to start developing certain tactical skills, but Marine combat training is much more extensive. You're out in the field and you, uh, well, you get a book. This is actually my book, Private First Class Berletic, uh, First Platoon Fox Company. I still got it. It's one of the few things that I have left uh, from my time in the Marines. And you don't just read this book. You got to go out into the field and do these things. So uh, looking at individual actions in the defense, you're talking about during daylight and darkness, operating in urban and woodland terrain, given uh, a weapon system, either M16A2, M249 squad automatic weapon, or the M240 Golf uh, machine gun, practice grenades, mission essential equipment, blank ammunition, and a defensive order, defense order wearing a fighting load, execute individual actions in the defense by establishing a defensive position and engaging targets of opportunity within the sector of fire. So basically what we did is we, we dug fighting holes, uh, different types of fighting holes and uh, entrenchments. Some had to go and build a command post, which was, was quite a project. And I was very surprised about how, how elaborate you, you can make something in a very short amount of time. And we lived in those holes in the ground and day and night, uh, there were different groups out there and they would 
carry out mock attacks on each other's positions. You're digging these holes, you have a defensive line of razor wire, and then beyond that, you have, it's like staggered, it alternates to kind of channel the enemy into fields of fire. And your fields of fire overlap with the other people in your group. And this was done in a very short amount of time. It was done mostly to uh, combat another infantry, another squad of infantry. Already at this level, it's quite extensive. And it will be very difficult to overcome this position because people are dug in and they're, they're waiting for you. And if you think about it, in Ukraine, they had eight years to dig in. And they're not just worried about infantry coming through the area. They know that there's tanks and artillery and rockets. And they've built these defensive positions with all of that in mind. So overcoming these defensive positions will be very difficult. But once you do, then the momentum is on your side and your progress will accelerate. That's what we're seeing on the live uamap.com. This is a pro-Ukrainian live map and even they are showing progress daily progress by russia uh, in quick succession now that we haven't seen previously and th this is the defenses of ukraine collapsing in the donbas region so if you thought this video was useful please like and share think about subscribing it's free to do it helps the channel grow uh, check the video description below for other places you can find my work. I'm on Rumble, I'm on Odyssey, I'm also on Telegram, I'm very active on Telegram. I've been kicked off of Twitter and any day maybe I'll be kicked off of YouTube too. So, so check out where else you can find and follow my work. In the video description below will be the link to Jacob Dreisen's video about defensive depth and how Russia is breaching it and the acceleration of things on the ground and also some psychological aspects which are very interesting uh, a very good point to make as well also in the video description below are ways you can help support my work you could do that through buy me a coffee through patreon and through paypal uh, to everyone who has been helping support my work thank you so much i could not do this without that support uh, and as always thank you for watching